Good morning, you all. Um, it is September 9th. Yep. 9.30 in the morning, Wednesday morning. And we are headed to fall. Um, 57 degrees in Boonville, Missouri this morning. Um, I usually sit on the porch in my shorts for coffee. I had to put on long pajama pants. And my toes got cold. So, <clears throat> bunch of rain I think we had thunderstorms overnight so <clears throat> it's cooling off uh, and you can feel this shift when I went to school yesterday and taught at State Fair Community College you could feel the shift in the weather so technically it's not fall but it sure feels like it so I just wrote an article um, started yesterday between classes um, on pretty much what you can do to boost your immunity. So, I mean, we're headed into another flu season, right? We've got a viral pandemic pandemic that is still ongoing. So what we need to do is kind of, if you don't want to take supplements, I've given you a supplement list on how to protect yourself and boost your immunity. But you can do it without, uh, for the most part, without supplements. I still think you need zinc and an uh, omega-3 fish oil or a quercetin or a black cumin seed oil uh, to help get zinc get in your cells. But here's a way to eat <clears throat> as we head into this season <clears throat> um, that will help boost your immunity in a natural way just, just based on how you're eating. Uh, long list of foods. Uh, if you don't want to take notes and write it all down, I have written it. It will be on a blog post on... Uh, healthwithoutrisk.com. Um, I just sent it to my IT guy. Um, so he'll probably can't remember how long it takes him usually put them up, but usually within a day or two. Um, and then the YouTube channel, Health Without Risk, this video is up and it stays up on Facebook. I'm trying to figure out how to caption these. So I reached out to a guy that I know from Texas that does a lot of social media stuff. So it'd be really nice to be able to caption this because not everybody wants to hear my voice and I do the same thing a lot of people I'll watch a video on mute uh, and read the captions I just I'm not that IT -E or technologically wizardry to figure out how to do that yet uh, although I did figure out a way that was ridiculously expensive to do it so I don't want to do it that way um, so the article if you'll share this video because I'll see if you've done it. I'll just PDF you, or I'll send you the PDF of what I wrote so you don't have to sit there with your notebook <clears throat> and take all kinds of notes. So I'll just send it through Messenger, and then you can print it out. Um, Mandy, since you asked. Good morning, Mandy and Wendy and Linda. Mandy again is going to take notes. Well, you're gonna, your hand's going to hurt. Um, and then Wendy is Wendy takes notes in the comments, so pay attention to Wendy. I'll, let, I'll, I'll probably go faster than she can type. Maybe. <clears throat> okay, so really what we're talking about is immunity. So nutrition and immunity. So a lot of people are talking about washing your hands and disinfecting and wearing masks. I have to teach with a mask on. If I wear a cloth mask and State Fair Community College gave me a kind of a satiny mask and Boonville High School gave me kind of a satiny mask or we bought one of those. Uh, but I found out pretty quick two weeks ago that if I'm trying to lecture and talk through one of those cloth or kind of silky feeling masks, they suck into my mouth. <laughs> so it's very difficult to speak in front of a bunch of people with this thing sucking into your mouth. So I use uh, one of those throwaway sort of masks that we wore in surgery because I'm used to that and speaking through one of those when I was in the operating room. Um, still not ideal. <clears throat> your mouth gets hot and all that and I'm not sure I have a hard time hearing people because I can't see their lips so I think I read lips more than I think I did, than I thought I did uh, and I'm not hearing impaired at all I just kind of watch people's mouth when they're talking and I can figure out especially with differences in accents and all that like my Missouri lingo that I keep talking about so so those are all important <clears throat> okay masks regardless of the fact that the you know viruses and flus and all that can that can go through the mask, you're still not sneezing um, and coughing on somebody. So I was in the middle of lecturing yesterday, and I had to 
I was had the mask on, and I felt the sneeze coming on, so I stepped outside, took the mask off. Uh, well, actually, I didn't step outside. I stepped away from the class and sneezed into my um, this part of my arm, like you're supposed to, and then put the mask on. You haven't lived till you've sneezed in surgery inside of a mask, and you can't do anything about it. So here's some examples of when nutrition can affect your immune system. So protein is needed for antibody production. Okay, and then fiber feeds the good bacteria. We talked about the microbiome about two weeks ago, a week and a half ago, in your gut. So that supports your immune system. So the fiber helps your microbiome that's helping you. And then a omega-3 or fish oil or eating fish support the healthy inflammatory response okay and then vitamin D we've talked about um, <clears throat> maybe ad nauseum for you all interacts with the receptors on cells where viruses bind so it's a, it's all it's in you know our bodies are elegant and the whole idea behind teaching you all this is to have you not have to be nerdy like me and read all kinds of journal articles and scientific papers uh, so that I can just tell you and what I think is plain English, although sometimes I can't get to plain English, what you can do. So we've talked about supplements, we've talked about um, things that are coming out in the, in the literature about this pandemic, but we're headed for a flu season. Um, and so what's that going to look like on top of a viral pandemic, which doesn't seem to be slowing down, deaths are. Um, and then uh, I'll probably hop on here and do a little video later. I keep meaning to do this on the CDC data that's come out because um, it's been sort of interpreted um, erroneously, I, I guess, is the best way to describe it. So I'll explain what that means. So whenever your immune system is mounting a uh, response to an infection, you get oxidative stress and inflammation. So you, we've talked about oxi oxygen reactive species, or what most people call free radicals, okay? And those create problems everywhere in your body. So the buildup of those free radicals is the onset that can set you up for chronic inflammation and is the basis of a lot of chronic disease states. In other words, Chronic inflammation may result in high blood pressure, heart disease, insulin resistance, obesity, uh, and then insulin resistance that eventually gets you to type 2 diabetes. All of that is reversible. Sometimes with supplements, a lot of times with supplements, sometimes with my injection stuff, and you know me, I like shots, but you can also eat your way to being healthier. I'm not talking about, just like when I tell people to to do physical fitness it doesn't mean I mean it doesn't mean that I'm telling you to run a marathon or bench press 300 pounds uh, with several reps I'm talking about pretty simple stuff so I'm not going to tell you to eat kale although that's on the list but I'm kind of like the guy that says that showed that video last year I've seen it several times how to eat kale and he's putting it into the trash can I get that or putting it down the garbage disposal so one of the best ways to combat stress and oxidative stress and free radicals is nutrition. So fruits and vegetables, you can hear vegetables, fruits, blah, blah, blah. I got lots of different options if you don't like any of that. They're chock full of vitamins, minerals, they combat oxidative stress, they keep your health, immune system healthy. And there's a study, and it's referenced in this um, blog post, this article I wrote, from the journal Nutrients recommending eating foods that provide these, th th these things. So protein is found throughout the body. It's made of amino acids, nine of which are essential, meaning you have to get them from an outside source. So either supplements, shots, or eating them. There are 11 others, actually 12 if you're a child, uh, made within your body and approximately 30% of your calories should come from protein. So 50 to 70 grams of protein daily is what you want to get in uh, to your system. So the good food sources of that include broiled sirloin, sirloin steak, yum, um, <clears throat> ham steak, pretty yum, grilled sockeye salmon, pretty yum, lentils, beans, nuts, and poultry. 
and the source of dietary protein may in fact be more important than the amount. My lecture yesterday was on the Krebs cycle for physiology and we talked about how eating affects production of energy in the body in three different ways. So we went through the biochemistry. I'm sure that they were horrified and want to jump out the window. Uh, I was when I first studied it in medical school, but I should have paid attention because it's very important. Uh, so too much protein, so you're looking for moderate protein. Too much protein, actually, you gain weight because of those biochemical reactions that occur. <clears throat> okay, next, the omega-3 fatty acids, also essential. Your body cannot produce them. There are three uh, <clears throat> called alpha-linolenic acid, or ALA, and DHA, which is docosahexaenoic acid, and EPA, which is icosapentaenoic acid, all of which are beneficial for prevention of heart disease, Alzheimer's d disease, and depression. So good dietary, good dietary sources of omega-3s are all types of fish, walnuts, chia seeds, flaxseed, flaxseed oil, that's really good on toast, by the way, uh, hemp seeds, yay, egg yolks, soybeans, especially if you eat them whole as edamame, which are kind of addictive, sort of, and green vegetables as well as wild rice. You can also take an omega-3 fatty acid supplement or fish oil or krill oil. Okay, so fiber along with good hydration helps your digestive system function properly like we talked about earlier. May help the, reduce the risk of heart disease, obesity, and diabetes. You want about 25 to 35 grams of fiber per day with women staying on the lower end of that range and men on the higher end of that range. So the dietary uh, sources of fiber uh, you think celery, but celery isn't as fibrous as some of the other things. So fruits like raspberries, pears, apples with skin on them, bananas, oranges, strawberries, vegetables including green peas, broccoli, turnip, broccoli is way higher in uh, fiber than celery, um, turnip greens, yuck, Brussels sprouts, really good if you do them right, baked potato with skin, sweet corn, corn, raw cauliflower and raw carrots, grains, quinoa, barley, oat bran, oatmeal, air popped popcorn, believe it or not, brown rice and rye bread, as well as legumes and nuts and seeds. Um, I can go on and on. Okay, vitamin D. It's unusual since it's not found in your typically recommended fresh fruits and vegetables. It's obtained by sun exposure, <coughs> foods, as well as supplements. So we've talked about 5,000 units of vitamin D a day, especially during the pandemic. Uh, 4,000 pretty much routinely is what vitamin D researchers recommend. Um, <coughs> so <coughs> it's an essential vitamin. It cannot be produced in your body. So vitamin D rich foods include fish, cod liver oil, which you, <coughs> which you can take as a uh, as a supplemental capsule or actually the little oil and we talked about this about two or three weeks ago you can overdo cod liver oil <clears throat> so pay attention eggs caviar ultraviolet light treated mushrooms fortified milk fortified orange juice so you're going to watch the sugar and orange juice yogurt fortified tofu which I wrote is not for me uh, beef or calf liver, also not for me. Fortified cereal, pork, eel, which contains protein and omega-3s as well, less mercury than canned tuna. And then fish roe, which is R-O-E, which is less expensive than caviar, as well as cooking and duck fat, believe it or not. Okay, vitamins A, C, and E, variety of food sources. So vitamin A, carrots, everybody knows that. Sweet potatoes, red and yellow peppers, tomatoes, green vegetables, watercress, mangoes, apricots, pumpkins, romaine lettuce. Uh, iceberg lettuce has no nutritional value whatsoever. People like it, but romaine's way more healthy and nutritionist. N yeah, nutritionist and cantaloupe. And then for vitamin C, kiwi, berries, oranges, grapefruit, broccoli, spinach, cabbage, peas. Um, strawberries, green peppers, it's not found in meat at all. 
vitamin D, E, almonds and nuts, spinach, apples, carrots, celery, and avocado. Okay, vitamin B and 12, part of the stress vitamin combination. And those, if you eat them together or take them together, may reduce homocysteine levels, which has been associated with a higher risk of heart disease. Okay, so eating a high carb standard American diet won't give you enough vitamin B, and B6 and B12. So most Americans do not eat enough B6 and B12. So supplements as shots or as liquid or as capsules, shots being the best, I think, may help if you're not into some of the stuff I'm talking about food-wise. So B6 food includes beef, tuna, uh, ground beef, tuna, turkey breast, salmon, beef liver, again, chickpeas, so I make hummus homemade, it's wonderful, love chickpeas, onion, tofu, and spinach. B12 food sources, top sirloin beef, tuna, trout, salmon, haddock, ham, chicken breast, eggs, yogurt, milk, and Swiss cheese. Okay, so I keep telling you to take zinc supplements, but you can get zinc in your food as well. It's not stored in your body. So if you're not ingesting zinc or taking a supplemental zinc, you don't have any zinc. It's not stored. So it has to get into the cells like we talked about a week and a half ago. So quercetin, black cumin oil, fish oil help. There's zinc ionophores and help zinc get into the cells. So <clears throat> foods that are good sources for zinc include oysters, just not in an R month, right? Not an R month, is that right? Yeah, I think it's an R month. Although it's in every month an R month except May. Anyway, there's certain months, like three months a year, you're not supposed to eat oysters, and I can't remember the deal. Beef patties, Alaska king salmon, Lobster, pork chop loin, baked beans, dark meat chicken, yogurt, oatmeal, chickpeas, again, pumpkin seeds, milk, almonds, wheat germ, and cheddar cheese. Okay, then iron. There's two varieties of iron. One is heme iron, which is the oxygen carrier, but it's only absorbed about 30%, usually from animal proteins. And then there's non-heme iron, which is only absorbed about 10%, and comes from plant sources. What I learned many years ago, um, because women that are pregnant tend to be iron deficient, if you give them iron, they don't like it because they get constipated. So it's stuck in their intestine. If you also give them vitamin C at 500 milligrams, the absorption of an iron supplement goes from 10% to 90%. I learned that from a family practice physician in a little bitty town <clears throat> in the southwest Missouri. Um, and I've used that for since 19, see I worked with him in 1985. So, um, can't think of the name of the town. I'm trying to think of the name of the town. It's right on Mark Twain Lake. So, if you eat vitamin C rich food with iron, for, uh, iron food, you get better absorption. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of different kinds. So there's meats, animal stuff and then there's plants so for meat and eggs beef ham lamb turkey chicken veal pork beef jerky liver liver worst and eggs of any style good iron source seafood including shrimp clams tuna mackerel oysters scallops and sardines for vegetable sources it would be string beans broccoli peas sweet potatoes, spinach, dandelion greens, beet greens, kale, there it is, chard, there that is. I put kale twice for some reason. Bread and cereal, so enriched white or wheat bread, enriched pasta, bran cereal, cornmeal, rye, bread, cream of wheat, cornmeal, and enriched rice. As for fruits, watermelon, raisins, strawberries, prunes, Prune juice, dates, figs, dried peaches, dried apricots, and then beans including tomato paste, dried, pe well, not, that's not a bean, beans, etc. is what I wrote. Uh, tomato paste, dried peas, lentils, dried beans, beans in general, tofu, molasses, corn syrup, maple syrup, and instant breakfast. Next, we look at copper, required for iron metabolism, neuroendocrine function, and immune system fu function, as well as cell renewal. 
Copper is not stored in the body, so it must be consumed. The World Health Organization is recommending two grams of copper in your daily diet. It is food for your brain, as is methylated folic acid. It's prevalent in the hippocampus, copper, and which is the source of your long-term memory. Okay? The most ab uh, abundant copper intake comes from organ meat, so liver, tongue, tripe, kidney, and heart. So if you can't stomach that or it doesn't appeal to you, you can get copper from nuts like cashews, as well as sunflower seeds, chunky peanut butter, almonds and hazelnuts as a snack. Lentils are good, a uh, good source. Chickpeas are a good source. You can get it from kale, cooked asparagus, cooked spinach, fresh parsley, uh, avocado, which is another miracle food like eggs, good source of copper. I have a friend of mine who is 59 years old has eaten one avocado a day for 20 years. Feels great. She also juices celery, which sounds horrifying. Um, and apparently it is, but I guess you get used to it. And then, and then quinoa, shiitake mushrooms, sun-dried tomatoes all for copper. And then the best of all is dark chocolate, which is loaded with copper, zinc, and iron. So my nutritionist fitness guru that works with me eats dark chocolate every day. Okay, selen selenium, last but not least. My former partner in Oklahoma City was talking about selenium on YouTube for COVID protect, uh, protection, I think it was last week. It is a thyroid protective element and helps fight off infections. So those, and those with Graves disease, you know, thyroid difficulty and Crohn's disease may have trouble absorbing selenium. Um, so, and then even a supplemental selenium, uh, they would still have trouble. Too much selenium is toxic. The recommended intake for an adult is 55 micrograms per per day, so you kind of got to look it up. Food sources for selenium are found in Brazil nuts, fish, ham, pork, beef, turkey, chicken, cottage cheese, eggs, once again the perfect food, brown rice, baked beans, mushrooms, sunflower seeds, oatmeal, lentils, cashews, bananas, milk, yogurt, and spinach. So if you load your system up with those nutrients, quality protein, healthy fats, 30% protein, low carbs, higher natural fats, and lots of vegetables, uh, that list of the variety of food should give you some, you know, something to consider for meals that you'll actually enjoy. So for me, there's a bunch of stuff on there that I would not enjoy, but plenty of stuff on there that I would. Okay, so that is basically <clears throat> the basics on how to eat for a better immune system. And since we're headed this way, I mean, the, the cool is in the air. You can just tell that it's, the season is changing. This is a way for you to boost your immune system if you don't want to take a bunch. A lot of people just don't like taking supplements. That's why I like shots. They'll take a shot, especially with a 25-gauge needle. I can give you a shot with that. You won't even know I did it. Um, but that's an easy way or a big list of foods that you can eat that will help protect you from viral influenza and potentially this other virus as well as we head into the fall. Okay, so I'm going to enjoy this nice fall day. I've got plenty of little consults to do that I've got to, that I've got to send and do and talk on the phone and Zoom. Uh, so I'm going to do that the rest of the day. And you guys have a great Wednesday. I'll see you Friday. Um, and so peace and health, you all. And I will talk to you soon. If you want this PDF, just share this video. I'll see that you did it, and I'll, I'll messenger you the PDF. It'll be on healthwithoutrisk.com, hopefully with by tomorrow. Okay, see ya. See you later. Bye.